What's going on YouTube? In today's video, I'll be working on the motor on the Tahoe today, trying to get rid of those leaks from the oil. And it also has a misfire and you know, a whole bunch of stuff little here and there. So I'll be doing a lot of maintenance on the motor, but if you want to check that out, make sure you stay tuned and let's get to it. All right guys, so today I'll be working on the Tahoe right here. It was having a low oil pressure on my dashboard before, and I'll put a clip of that whenever I purchased it, but it ended up being the oil pressure sensor right here. Just I did go ahead and take this one off from my Yukon. So I went ahead and swapped it over and the truck does have some oil leaks. So there's some oil leaks on top. I believe it's from the valve covers and then on the bottom. So I'm thinking also that oil pan gasket. So I'll just be bringing down the oil pan and replacing the gasket as well as the pickup O-ring tube. And I'm not sure if the oil from here is just you know going all the way down, but I still wanna go ahead and change that gasket down there, you know, and make sure everything is good and clean it all up. And before I do the oil change and the gasket and o-ring i'll go ahead and show you right now so this is what it looks like right here i'm not sure if you can tell but the the needle kind of like moves a little bit or it kind of dances a little bit but sometimes it's more noticeable but i think it's because the truck is having like a misfire and i still haven't done you know like the the regular tune up you know like spark plugs and wires and all that stuff but whenever i step on the gas you know it's better than before because before it wasn't doing none of that but you can kind of see like i said how the needle moves a little bit and i believe it's doing that because the truck is having like a small misfire or you know something like that because it does need a tune up and i haven't changed out the spark plugs or the spark plug wires or anything like that so i still gotta do all that stuff but i do want to start off with these oil leaks so Let's just see, you know, what it does later on. But for now, that's what it's doing. And the pressure, I mean, at least it's better because it was like real low, it's close to like almost zero. And whenever I step on the gas, you know, it does go higher now. So let me just go ahead and start taking this thing apart so I can see if it does any difference right now. Or maybe later on, once I fix that check engine light with the, you know, tune up on spark plugs and spark plug wires, all that stuff. All right, so first off, I'm gonna start off by draining my oil. And it does use a 15 millimeter. And I'll go ahead and show you right here. It's really oily, so that's why I want to change out all this stuff. You can probably see that right there. But there's a 15 right there. There's a 15 millimeter right there. So I'm gonna take that off so I can drain it into the bucket right here and then remove the filter. So it looks really oily right there. And that's why I also want to do this. Okay. Cheating, I'll tell you, I saw. Good, good. Exactly why I want to change all this gaskets out and all that because it has a lot of oil leaking around here and I'm pretty sure a lot of this is also from the top but you know it looks really bad in here and I'll get some or I'll try to get some better shots if I can so I just want to start out by you know taking off this old oil all right now that I have the oil we can take a quick look down here and it looks like I'm gonna have to remove this shield to get to the oil pan because it is right there so there you can see like there's a whole bunch of oil all around the oil pan so it's real oily and old and here's a better look so there's a lot of dirt oil everything everywhere here details i need details okay detail you know say detail before okay <laughs> be removing this right here this whole cross member to get that oil pan so we do that all right so on this bar right here i just had to remove 18 millimeters from the front and the back so it was two of them and you know this is the nut right here and then on the the bolts are like really big so it was four of them right there and you can see one's just holding it right here there's another one holding it right now so i'm gonna just take this off right now all right, now that I have the brace that I took off right here with the 18 millimeters, I can go ahead and start, you know, taking off the 10 millimeter bolts right here. So there's a whole bunch of them and they're all around. So one, two, three, 
you know, all around this area. And then there's like two on the bell housing of the transmission one and then two. So I gotta take those off. I got it all loose now. So there you can see it's already hanging. And I just gotta wiggle it, you know, out of place. But it wasn't too bad getting to the bolts. The trickier part, I would say, is in this area with the wiring and stuff because these wires are all like zip tied. And then there's a bracket right here on the side that goes here and it goes bolted to the side from this 10 millimeter bolt. And then you can slide it back this way so that you can, you know, get the wires out the way. But I cut all the zip ties and everything so it can give me more room. But that was, I think, the trickier part right there. And then also this bar getting in the way of this bolt and then the other bolt over here. So overall, it wasn't like too bad. I think it's not like hard. It's just that it's, you know, when doing it in a garage and stuff, if I had a lift then it would be super easy. So I'll just keep going at it and bringing this thing down so I can clean it up and do all that good stuff there. A few minutes later. I finally got the oil pan down and it's super dirty as you can tell right here. And here's the old gasket. So I'll be replacing this one right here. And then, you know, it's just all old oil. So I'm gonna just clean all this up, you know, and try to get it as good as I can. And then that's from the bottom right there. So there's a lot of gunk and dirt, you know, everything in here. And then I just threw all the bolts here. I'm gonna clean them up as well. It's got like different size. Uh, two of these go in the back area. And the two bolts that went in the back were the bell housing ones. And those were like 15 millimeter. I thought they were 13s, they were 15s. And then this side bracket that I was talking about the harness is the one that goes right here. And this is the threaded area. And I'll show you the bracket over here. So I've got this stuff laid out. So this is the, this is the one that holds on the harness. And you can see that I left the bolt right here. So it just goes like this. So there's a pin right over here that slides into this hole right here. And then just like that. And then it bolts onto the side. But all this kind of gets in the way whenever you're taking off the oil pan from getting into these bolts. So first you have to, you know, remove this bolt. So first removing this 10 millimeter right here and then sliding this harness back. And then, you know, that clears up all this area and so here we are back under the truck and you know it's real dirty so i just gotta clean it up it looks like really you know like burns up old oil and i'll also try to remove the pickup tube right here so that i can get to the o-ring that goes here in this area and then checking that out but that's pretty much what she looks like let me know what you guys think down below in the comments so i'll be removing the pickup tube right now so i can just uh take off the o-ring that goes right here in the front of it in that area and then probably put in a new one you know because since i'm all in here it's easier just to put it on they're not too expensive they're just like a couple of dollars give yeah, me a dollar man come on man for somebody and then clean up this and put it all back together but overall it's not like a hard job it's just you know doing it on the floor all right so i went ahead and took off the pickup tube and right here it just had a 13 millimeter nut and then on this side right over here another 13 millimeter and right on top, this was being held on by a 10 millimeter bolt. So that was not too bad. And whenever I pulled it off, there was no gasket here. So the little O-ring was just stuck on top and then it's right here. So I believe it's the red one. I'm gonna order me a new one because I have the gasket here now. And you know, this is the model number right here, but I'll have it linked in the description as well as the O-ring cause I'm gonna have to order a new one. And I believe it is the red one, but you guys let me know, it looks really dark. But whenever I clean it up, it almost looks kind of red. So I'm gonna just order the red one. And it does look like really bad. So I'm glad that I took this off because it, like I can feel that it's like real brittle. And even if you really look at it, like there's like some small tears on it. So I'm pretty sure this thing, it was like it had to be replaced already. So that was good that I did all this. And you know, that way I can just clean it all up and have the oil, you know, flowing way better. And then also I do want to clean up the screen right here. Cause the screen does look pretty dirty. I'm not sure if it can pick up on camera, but and as you can see, the oil's like really old and you know, a lot of dirt and all that stuff probably. I'll just go ahead and start cleaning all that stuff up and then so I can put in the new gasket and then order me that new O-ring so I can put it on as well. Eventually. All right guys, so I went ahead and finished up cleaning up the pan and this is what it looks like. And it's not like perfect, but I think it'll be, you know, better than what it was. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. And I also did remove all the sensors so the oil level sensor, I believe it was like a block off plate on the other side. And 
I'll just be replacing all the parts that go on here because I don't want to, you know, take it on and off again. So I'd rather just do it all at once. But the oil level sensor goes here. I also noticed that on the drain plug, the bolt doesn't even have a rubber grommet on there anymore. I'm not sure if you can see that, but there's no rubber on there. And, you know, whenever I purchased all the parts, I did decide to buy a new bolt. And it has that big piece of rubber right there. So it should be good. I'm not even sure if it was leaking from there also. And then that's the old oil level sensor looks really beat up it might still work but i'm gonna just you know put all new parts and then the old pickup o-ring gasket and those are here this one and i'll link the items down below if you need to get the model numbers and then this one right here is for the oil cooler block off plate and this is what it looks like but it's kind of funny how in the pan itself it has two holes so right here you can see it has two holes but the actual bracket or plate is a big hole so it's just weird they could have just you know blocked it all off straight i don't know why they did that but that's gm right there and overall i mean i'm happy with it so you know it's way cleaner now so there's no more oil on it. it's just like you know old aluminum and as long as everything you know is functioning correctly and not leaking no oil then i'm happy with that and this is the pickup tube over here i did go ahead and clean as well looks much shinier and i cleaned up the screen everything on here so it was a lot of you know elbow grease or manual work but you know i got it done wax on wax off the o-ring goes right there i just took it off and then this piece that goes inside so i got them as clean as i could so let me know what you think so now i'm gonna just go ahead and start assembling it and also I did try to clean up the bolts and all that stuff so I can just, you know, put them all back together and put some Loctite on them. This is just what it looks like so far down here. And as you can see, I got the the gasket side pretty cleaned up. I might clean some more here, I'm not sure, but most likely, you know, if I get some more time, I might do that. So overall, you know, it's pretty good and I'm gonna just start assembling it. And then if I get more time, I'm gonna clean some more right here. All right guys, so I got it all set up and ready to go to put into the truck. And I just put some zip tights on the gasket on these two just to like kind of keep it in place while i put it up there and i do have some gasket maker right here on the corners i did put on all four corners so just a little dab it's like a gasket maker and then i got the filter the new oil plug right there so everything's looking good now i just gotta throw it up there and torque it up to specs and then I got all the bolts right here ready with some blue thread locker on all of them. And on the O-rings, I did change them up because as you can see right here, this was the one that I had purchased, but it's too big. Pick up the difference, just a little bit too thick. And then this one's a little thinner. So I got the correct one out of my old box from the Silverado when I was doing the cam install a long time ago. So now I can go ahead and put them up and you know just fill it up with the oil and stuff. All right, right now that I have the oil pan on the bottom all set up, I'm going to remove the coil packs and also the valve covers so that I can replace those seals because I'm not sure if you can tell, but there are some oil leaks right here. So I'm going to take off the valve covers and all these coil packs and then I'm going to swap them over from the Yukon because I don't like the way that these look. So I'm going to take those off and just, you know, put them to the side and then use the Yukon's valve covers. So right here. These are not even the original ones because they had done a motor swap and this is what came out of it. So I'm gonna clean these up as well. Cause whenever, you know, most people, I guess if they're doing a job, you know, they're not really just gonna go ahead and clean up everything for you. So it's really not worth their time. So they usually, you know, they'll do a job, like put the gasket and then seal it back up. But you know, it's my truck. So I'm gonna just go ahead and clean it all up and make it look way better than this. To clean the valve covers, I am gonna be using this right here. I'm not sure if you ever used this before, but it's like for kitchen stuff. So this is what I'm gonna be using. And this is also what I use to clean the oil pan and it worked out real good. So I'm gonna be reusing it again. You can usually find these everywhere, but I'll still put them on the description if you wanna check them out. And I'm gonna go ahead and start cleaning that. There's a lot of dishes to be washed. Wash them yourself, right? Could you? I have a tire. All right, here they are. Let me know what you guys think. I went ahead and took as much as I could. I think they look way better. And in the inside as well. They're not perfect, but you know, I'm happy with it. I just got to dry them, but I just finished washing them right now, and I pretty much got almost everything. And 
I'm just waiting now for the gaskets to arrive and then I can put them on probably tomorrow. But I mean, I'm just doing the video. So for you guys, it's, you know, pretty quick. So I like the way they came out and, you know, it's just the normal silver color. I could have painted them, but nah, I didn't want to do it right now. Maybe later on in the future I might because on the Yukon, I used to have them actually painted in a red in my original valve covers. But at least now they're all silver, you know, and clean. So it's pretty good. And once I get them all dried up, then, you know, I'll just install all the grommets that go on here and the new gasket and bolts. But that's what they look like there. And I still have to take apart the Tahoe's valve covers and wiring, but those are not too bad. Mostly it's just like some eight millimeters and some 10 millimeters. The studs are like tens and I think there's a couple of eights. I don't quite remember, but most of them I think are tens and they're not too bad to do. So I'll just start taking that apart as well. So I've already, you know, removed all the coil packs and I also removed the old spark plugs and wires and then they're over here. So these are the old wires and then these are the spark plugs that were in there. And if you notice on the top, this little pin is like so small the little spark plug where it makes it like you know spark up and then i took these off from the yukon which are old and used but they look better if you notice on the top copper end or the material right here it's super thick so i think that would be way better and for now i'm gonna use these even though you know they're older and all that stuff but you know at least it'll be working good because the yukon didn't have no problems and later on i will change them out but to me that's a really big difference let me know what you guys think down below in the comments but check that out like i said it's so big like it's got a lot of material so i'm pretty sure that does some you know good current right there and that's probably why the manufacturers you know they be putting certain stuff in the cars but this is the one that's in there and i'm gonna be looking them up you know all the specs and all that stuff and see which ones i want to get these right here it says they're double platinum so they're supposed to be good but like i said i don't like the fact that that top piece where it's supposed to be making the spark is so small and the truck does shake so i'm pretty sure that has something to do with it or the wires but the wires also tested out good but either either way like i'm just gonna do the yukon spark plugs for today and then i did get new wires so these are factory from ac delco and the wires that were in the tahoe were not factory so these were some type of aftermarket it just says some something right here protection uh, it doesn't really have a brand so i'll just be putting the new wires right here and the old spark plugs from the yukon and later on i'll change these out but for now like i said i really prefer them having all this copper right here so i'm gonna be looking out for some new ones and see if i can find like something better than this like in the iridium or something like that or if not maybe i just stick with the same style because you know i like the fact that it's got all that copper because like if you ever done like systems and all that stuff, you know that more wire or more copper is always better. So that makes a lot of sense to me versus this little thin piece of wire. So yeah, I'll just be doing those and I'll be putting them in right now. I'll be using the heat shields from the Yukon as well because they look a little bit cleaner. I mean, I could clean them up, but I'm gonna leave them alone. And then that's the ones on the Tahoe, you know, they look a little bit dirtier. And if you notice, I do have the coil packs right here. This is from the Tahoe. These are from the Tahoe and they look kind of older or i don't know it's just they look kind of weird i don't like this style so i'm gonna use the ones from the yukon and if you know the difference on these two coil packs just let me know down below in the comments uh, i'm not sure why they're different but i like this style better it makes it look cleaner i don't know if you notice this it doesn't have that heat shield right here or it doesn't have that little it doesn't have those little fins like this one has them i'm not sure why i'm not i don't know if these are supposed to be better or these but I, I always like this style better they just look better to me and also they're not as bad looking as this as far as like rust and all that see this and then right here so i like this condition better so i'm gonna just put these on and then put probably put these on the yukon later on and i'll you know i'll fix that up later but for today i'm working on the towel so i'm putting those on here's the new valve cover seals and you know they're way uh, thicker than the original ones because these are brand new and i already have all the other seals as well so all these i changed out on the bottom of the bolts and then on this side the pcv valve goes here so i am waiting for the rubber that goes on here the grommet because the original one is right here and it looks kind of beat up so i'd rather put a whole new one and then also the new pcv valve but other than that i mean they're pretty much done so i'm gonna just go ahead and start putting on this one and then in a few minutes when i get 
the other piece that goes on here or later on i'll just put it on but for you guys you know it'll be pretty quick and i prefer changing all the seals out at the same time that way you know i don't have to keep going back and forth with the same thing like right now that it's open i'd rather just do it all at once so i'll be replacing this one as well and a pcv valve I just went ahead and cleaned up all the mounting surface on the valve cover and it came out pretty clean. So that should be good to go for now. And that's what she's looking like. All right guys, so I decided while doing all this, I'm just gonna put in my high output alternator right here. So this is one of the ones that I had and this one was by DC Power. It's a 370 amp. So, cause I'm just looking at all this stuff and I'm like, man, I'm just gonna keep going, you know, like putting stuff here and there so i'm gonna take off this clutch fan also because it's all getting in my way and i also did remove the air intake because i don't like it but i don't know if i'm gonna put it back right now i'm gonna I'm just see what i'm gonna do but i'm just you know going with it and i'm gonna take off this alternator because it don't look good and i mean plus mine's is better you know it has more power than this, this is just the stock one and it just looks bad so i'm gonna just take it off anyways and you know while i'm just doing all this stuff right here. so while i'm here i'm just doing it but to take off this clutch fan what i did was so i did go ahead and put this on first and you know hit it a couple of times with the mallet and then after that i used the c clamp so i didn't use this in the beginning because i didn't want to make you know any damage on here or crack it but this does help it out to you know keep it sturdy and i'm not trying to tell anybody to you know do this but this is just what i'm doing on mines and it worked out pretty good because now i got it loose and wasn't too bad overall but this did help me out a lot since I don't have the tool to actually remove this and I didn't want to go get it at AutoZone or something, you know, I just wanted to do it right now. But that helped out right there. And like I said, I just, you know, put this on first, you know, tapped it a couple of times with this. And then after that came back and clamped it down and it was pretty much good to go right there. But let me know what you guys think on this and what do you do to take off your clutch fans? And also the reason that I'm trying to take this off is because I'm thinking of putting the electric fans i'm not sure if i'm gonna do it right now but i'm just getting it ready and i do have a set that i had found before so i might just throw them in but i'm not sure yet i'm just you know i still gotta get this thing out the way because i want to try them out and you know see what's going on there all right so the new alternator is in and i also have the the new fans right here but i do have to extend the charging wire that goes right here because you can see that it doesn't reach all the way to the connector right over here it's all the way to the top because this was my secondary alternator so it was on this side and either way like it's better to replace this charging wire because this is so thin that you know this is a high output alternator so it's way better to put a thicker wire on this because i want the most power you know out of it but that's pretty easy to do so i'm gonna just do that separate maybe do like a four gauge and then later you know upgrade to zero gauge or i'm gonna see what i have right here in the garage but on the electrical fence I did go ahead and grab them off a uh, 07 and up Tahoe and they do fit real good as long as you have the 34 inch radiator but I'm gonna take them off today and I just want to make sure that they fit in everything since I already you know took all this stuff apart and I believe it's better for me to do these on a separate video you know showing you how to wire them up because it is a little bit different you know and I don't want to get all this stuff confused with them so I'll just probably do a separate video on these and probably put my clutch fan back on for now but I might just leave the shrouds off because I don't want to be taken on and off you know it's, it kind of gets annoying but that's what she looks like right now and i'll just remove these and the good thing is that i have the 34 inch radiator so they fit real good and trying to do something like this you will have to have that bigger radiator not the 28 inch so you can just measure them and you'll see the size of your radiator but overall you know it's looking better now and i'll just extend this and i can you know have this ready to go right now and it won't affect that even though i don't have no system or anything like that it's still okay even if it's a high output alternator it's not going to damage the battery or anything in here it's actually you know better so i'm gonna go ahead and extend it and keep on going with it so i just received the pcv valve and the grommet that goes for the pcv valve right here so i'm gonna just go ahead and put those on so that's them right there and you know at least it's new now and i'll have the new grommet as well and then as far as the power wiring to charge the battery i did do a zero gauge that i found laying around in the garage so it's already you know heat shrinked and everything so it's good to go i don't have to do none of that stuff and it's just going straight to the battery right here so it's just a straight power wire it's not fused or nothing maybe i will fuse it later on but from the factory they're not even fused so if you follow this wire all the way to your battery they're not fused because it's the starter wire 
but i do like to fuse them i might do it later on but for now it should be good i just zipped it out the way and you know it's all loomed up and taped up so that's what it's looking like and i can go ahead and start putting that so i can put this coil pack back on all right we're gonna start it up for the first time and see how it does pressure looks higher so let me just go ahead and take it out here all right guys so i'm working down here on the motor still and you know the engine keeps rough idling so i'm just you know swapping stuff around and right now i do have the throttle body from my yukon you know with its own sensors and stuff and that helped maybe a little bit but not too much and i also changed out this egr valve right here Cause I already had it in the garage and you know, I just never used it. It was from my Silverado a long time ago and I just kept it. So I tried it out right now. And what happened with this was whenever I unbolted it because I did change out the line. So the line that goes from the EGR to the intake manifold and into the manifold down here, they broke off. So I'm not sure if you see this, but they're loose because the bolts broke off. And one of them is right here. The other one just flew away somewhere. Bruh. So what I'm thinking of doing is I'm gonna go ahead and just block that off. So I'm gonna have them weld it close and then I'm gonna just bypass this and try to find a plug to close the intake from right here. Cause I know that there's some factory ones that don't even come with the factory EGR. So I'm gonna look around and see if I can find a plug to plug it up or just buy a new one. But I'm gonna see if I can get a used one, you know, cause there's factory ones that come on these manifolds also. So that's what it's looking like right now. And that's also why I moved this up. So. It gave me some space to work around here but yeah this one is from the yukon and it's in better condition but once i put it on like i said when i removed those bolts they broke off and the one looks more beat up to me so that's why i was changing it out as well so i thought this might have a leak on it and then these are the ends and this is the this is the old tahoe's egr valve so they all look bad anyway so i was just like you know i'm trying to swap out parts to see what i can use and not use and then this is the old the throttle body gasket from the Tahoe but I put the one that I had on the Yukon from her manifold right here so you know just stuff here and there and the fuel pressure regulator I took off from the Yukon as well because the other one was bad on the Tahoe and now you know there's a lot of parts in here from the Yukon but you know it's getting a little bit better little by little but that's so far right now So let me see if I can just go ahead and try to delete this. And if not, you know, later on I'll do something with it. So I went ahead and ordered another oil pressure switch just to make sure that, you know, maybe this is the fix right here because it keeps doing that low oil pressure. So I'm about to put it on right now and see, you know, if that's gonna fix it. I went ahead and got these uh, fuel filter replacement. So here's the stock one. And then I got this uh, k and right here supposed to be better but we'll see i mean i guess if it's new it's better than nothing you know but this is supposed to be a good one so i'm gonna use this and i got these o-rings right here because the o-rings on the fuel line look kind of old and stuff so i'm gonna see if i can get the correct size in here if not i'm gonna try to order a different set that i have from amazon too but i'm gonna try this one first and then you know this is the old fuel filter on the tahoe and i'm gonna just be putting this one right here so I'm gonna have these on the description as well, or if I use any other O-rings, I'll list them on there as well too. I'll show you right here my fuel filter. Well, I already removed it. And you can see that's the line right there, and this is where my filter goes. And here's the O-ring on the line that I'm telling you about. So it looks kind of busted or old, so I'm gonna just replace it. Let me know what you think, but it looks pretty bad to me. It looks like squished and all that. So that's on the fuel line there and then on the other one as well this is the other one right here so they look kind of beat up so i'm gonna just change them out with those new o-rings and then put the filter in here so it should be good all right so i got off the old o-rings off the fuel lines from the fuel filter and you can see they're right here they look pretty beat up i'm not sure i don't think they're supposed to be like this they look like you know it was about time to change them out but these are the new ones right here as you can see they're more you know round and all that 
So I think it was time to change these out. And they weren't leaking, but you know, while I'm doing this, I might as well replace this because I don't want them to leak. But that's them right there. And I'm gonna just go ahead and install them right now. And you know, put in the new fuel filter right here. So I think this should be good right here, you know. And I believe these will only work on the older trucks, like the 99 to 02. I think the 03 to 06 models and up don't really have this fuel filter. But if yours does, then I mean, you might have to check out your lines and see, because they get pretty beat up, I guess, over time. So there's a new O-ring. You can see it looks way better on there already. And I just got to put in the filter and on this side as well. So makes it look way better. Let me know if you guys have changed out your O-rings on your fuel lines, but not like I said, not all of them have the fuel filters down here, but the older trucks do. All right, now I have my new fuel filter in place with the new O-rings. Makes it look a little bit cooler, but I just wanna make sure it works. So let me go ahead and test it out and make sure I have no leaks with those O-rings or the new filter. So let's check that out. And before doing all this, I did go ahead and take off my fuel pump relay. You know, I made the truck run and then I pulled it off so I could just, you know, relieve the pressure right there but it was right over here so i'm gonna just go put it back on right now so i can test it out and you can see right here in the you know box right here fuel pump relay but let me go ahead and try that right out i'm gonna just prime it real quick so far so let me check down here yeah it's looking good so i'm gonna just turn it on now hopefully i don't spill no gas Now I got the fuel filter done. Now I want to go ahead and mess with the manifold as well because I want to change out the gaskets on here and also check on the fuel injectors and all that stuff, their O-rings and replace them as well because it is getting like a misfire. So it could be something with that. And, you know, I just want to make sure and it's probably okay to, you know, change out the gaskets and check all that stuff out since the truck is a 2001. And I'm pretty sure everything's still stock because everything that I'm taking out so far looks like original. So I'll go ahead and work on that. And I have some other manifolds here. So I have the one from the Yukon right here, which is under here. And I have another one. Here I have the intake manifold from my Yukon. I went ahead and took it off. So I'm gonna put this one on the Tahoe and it has a fuel rail. So I wanna use these fuel rails on the Tahoe as well. And I'm just gonna try and clean up the injectors and put new O-rings and all that stuff. But here you can see like some of them look clean, but some of them look kind of bad. Like this one looks pretty dirty or something. And then over here, they probably do need like a cleaning, so I'm gonna see if I can try to clean them up. As you can see, that one looks a little dirtier. This one looks more shinier, you know, and then the O-rings, I wanna replace them. But that one looks okay. This one looks, this I think the worst one looks kinda bad. But this is the ones that were on the Yukon and, you know, try to replace all the O-rings and stuff and then the gaskets on the manifold as well. So that's what I'll be doing next. So this is the Tahoe's factory intake manifold and overall it looks okay, but these are the gaskets right here. So you can probably tell they're leaking a little bit right here. They look a little wet, so they probably, you know, leaked a little bit. So it's okay that, that I'm replacing them, but they also look like they got replaced before. But you can see some of the oil on the edges and overall the block looks pretty clean over here. It looks like they had done some work. And all I did was just vacuum a little bit of the leaves that were around here and dirt, but I haven't really like cleaned it and it looks like pretty clean. I guess they had done the, you know, some maintenance or something here cause they silicone this. So they probably replaced the knock sensors on here. Cause usually that's what you want to do, you know, like silicone around it, but not like this. Usually I think it's like a channel, but I mean, I guess whatever. And that's what it looks like right there. But overall they look okay. I thought they would have been, you know, like a little bit worse, but I'm gonna just clean it up some more and you know put in all my new stuff right here and you guys let me know what you think down here but i wonder if they even did the head gasket or or what did they do you know like what kind of 
how far did they go on here i'm not sure okay so i went ahead and flipped this thing over and i think this is why i'm pretty sure this is why the truck keeps rough idling and all that good stuff right there but so not sure if you noticed but the injectors are all like dirty and clogged up Bruh. so some of them are okay but most of them are you know pretty messed up so you can see that they're all bad right there look at that so the manifold was like leaking oil or something and you know all the injectors got all messed up so that must be it right there you can see right here yeah something you don't see every day is it <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, you do. Uh, in thousands and thousands of cars, you see them there. Okay, that I already went ahead and cleaned up the ones from the Yukon, and I'm going to be, you know, swapping all this stuff over with the new manifold. So I'm not going to use these injectors. I'm going to use my Yukon's injectors. And then this is the Yukon's throttle body, so I'm going to put that back. And all the sensors from the Yukon, but I'm going to just leave that manifold alone. And here's the ones from the Yukon already cleaned all up. So I tested them out and make sure they're all good, and I did put all the new O-rings on them. So that's a big difference compared to that right there. So I'm pretty sure the truck should be running way better with this now. And I got the rest all right here ready to go. So I just gotta, you know, assemble everything and, you know, clean up whatever I have to in the block over there. So there they go. So I went ahead and just slightly uh, cleaned it up right here cause it wasn't too dirty, but you can see the surface is, you know, pretty good for mounting now. And it doesn't look too bad at all. So I'm pretty sure that, you know, they did some type of work. So. I won't be replacing this gasket. I was going to do that, but I'm going to just leave it alone because it looks like, you know, they were in here already and it doesn't look like it was leaking from here, only from the intake manifold. So you can see these gaskets are already new because I had already placed an order for these separate. And I had also purchased this kit right here that has everything. So the intake manifold gaskets and then this bottom one right here for the valley cover. But I'm going to be doing it later, so I'm going to just keep it, you know. And then these gaskets I'm not using because I deleted the EGR valve. And then it comes with all the valve cover grommets and then the other valve cover gaskets right here. But like I said, I had already purchased those blue ones. So I'll just keep all these for later on because I do want to do maybe some other stuff later on to this or to the Yukon. And, you know, I could just keep these. And it also comes with the little seals right here for the crossovers on the coolant lines right here. So these four corners, there's like four corners right here. So for now... I'll just be doing it like this and then just using this right here, the intake manifold gaskets on the intake and then as well as, well as all the O-rings on the injectors and the fuel rail so you know that they're passing good fuel right there. I think that should make it good for now so once I put all this back together hopefully you know that misfire will go away and I think it should run way better because those injectors look real bad so they're all right there in the old manifold. And the gaskets that it used to have was these metal ones that were from Felpro but they're already leaking so i mean i just had to put the new ones on but these are like some nice gaskets as well and i just gotta finish putting that thing back together so the other one's already over here all cleaned up i just gotta install the fuel rails but pretty much everything's already set it's already cleaned up as much as i could all right guys so as you can see the truck is ready and everything came out good so now the truck doesn't have any more check engine light on the dash and it was pretty much the fuel injectors so since they were all clogged up that's why i was doing that misfire right there and you know everything else helped out with the gaskets because you know i guess that that oil leaking right there was probably messing around with that stuff and made it you know misfire you know clogged them all up but all that maintenance was good and then right here on the egr valve as you can see you know it's all just welded closed so right there you can see where the broken studs are at at the manifold and I just took it and they welded it closed right there with some weld. They didn't put no metal or nothing and I don't really care because I want to put the long tube headers on here. But I did have to do a EGR bypass and as you can see the EGR is not here. I just have the bolts on this area so those are the two factory bolts for the bracket and then that's already you know welded closed and the cover is right here for the intake and then you can see right here that the wiring is all zip tied. And I left the plug here because I did do a bypass and just in case, you know, for whatever reason, I didn't want to cut it off, but it's still there. I don't really need it no more since it's bypassed. And the good thing is that I did this bypass without a tune, so I didn't have to pay nobody to do it. You know, I did it myself just hardwiring it and I did some resistors in here. And I'll make a separate video on how I bypass the EGR without no tune. It's real simple and it's, you know, cheap because it's cheaper than paying for a tune. So I didn't want to do that. And that's the reason also that I did this because 
you know, I'm at home over here doing it by myself and I don't want to drive it somewhere else and then pay them for, you know, something that's not too, it's not that complicated, you know? So later on, whenever I do like something else bigger that requires a tune, then yeah, okay. But for now, this is, you know, not too bad. And the good thing with this bypass, you know, it's cheap and I don't have no check engine light. So now it's all good right there. And I'm happy about that. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. And she is running way better now. So I can tell the difference. Like before it was like shaking a lot because that rough idle of that misfire. And this is not really permanent. So I just have it like this because, you know, I'm working on it. But I do want to put the electrical fans on. And I'll probably do that on a separate video as well. So, you know, I can show you guys how I do it. But that's how she looks right now. And now, you know, she wants her hood back because Silverado has it on right now. But I'm going to see when I'm going to put it. I'm not sure yet because I still want to do a little bit more right here. And plus, you know, I could still drive it like this. Now she's driving way better now because she's not rough idling or anything like that. And I'm going to see what happens later on when I change out the headers. Because I know that on the Yukon, they were giving me like a code on the O2 sensors since the headers were cooler. But, you know, I'm going to figure that out later. And right now it has no check engine light. So Also, I think I skipped the part when I did this uh, air intake right here. So it's not permanent. But I just used what I had. So I had these filters from the Silverado when I was doing the air intake on that one. So I had two of these and that's why I put one of them because I had one on the Yukon, but it got smashed. And this part right here was in the truck when I bought it. So if you remember, it was, you know, like an elbow going all the way here, but it looked kind of too big to me and I don't really care for that. So I really want to drop the truck and do all that stuff. So I need to do some cutting and I actually want to move this this way. So that's why I'm trying to, you know, condense it all into the middle. But this is what I have and this is what I use. So, you know, I didn't spend no money right there because I already had these. And that's why I did that. But it's real easy if you want to relocate it to the center. You know, you just extend the wire. So here you can see I just zip tied it or loomed it this way. And it's just plugging in here. But, you know, it's nothing hard. I didn't have to solder nothing or anything like that. I just extended the wire over. And I'm just going to have it like that for now. And later I do want to move this. And whenever I want to move this this way, you know, it'll be easy. It's not that bad. But the harder part to move is the fuse box. That's where, you know, I might have a little bit more trouble, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that or what am I gonna do with this later, or if I'm gonna leave it here. But I do wanna move it cause I want, you know, I wanna get some space here to put bigger wheels or something. And so, yeah, this is pretty much what I did right here. It was nothing special. I did have to put the mass airflow sensor right in here. So it's, I'm not sure if you can see it, the Delphi right here. So it's just as, you know, I got it as small as I could or as short as possible because, you know, I wanted to use the least amount of parts and also, you know condense it this way and usually i like to put them center so this will be more like straight and without this but in this case i couldn't do it because it was going to hit the fan so it was already hitting and that's why this worked out with an angle and you know it's just temporary so like i'm not worried about that right now but i still think that this setup looks better than the real long one that came over here even if it's not like a cold air intake or anything like that and i just don't like the way it looks over here so i prefer this you know that's just me right there but I think it gives me a lot of space to work and you know that way I can continue doing what I'm doing right here and later on I do still have to do a little bit more work here but for now I think I'm good but you know I do want to do the headers and then I do need to mess with the AC because the AC is not working so that's going to be another project I got to do but for now it's okay since I can drive the truck whenever it's hot or you know I can have the windows down whatever it doesn't really matter but that's another project I need to fix the AC because the AC is not working right now and overall, you know, everything is good. At least the truck is actually running good now. And now that I have the engine all tuned up, you know, better to where it's more reliable, I'm more happy about driving it. But, you know, that's what usually what I like to do first, you know, get them running right because I don't want to be stranded or, you know, have a nice looking truck with a bad engine. You know, you don't want to do that. So I'd rather work on this first and then, you know, get all the other stuff going on. So here, I'll go ahead and show you real quick how the truck is looking inside. Also, don't mind the door panels because I did remove them since I am working on my mirrors. I'm trying to put them back on. And as you can see, I already have the switch right here, but I'll try to put them on a separate video. I have been, you know, working on the mirrors. That's why I have this already off on the bezel and on the dash right here. But, you know, I got to do that because I need to finish up those mirror videos right there. So let's go ahead and try it out. All right. So there you can see there's no more check engine light. And on the pressure, it's not like in the middle, but I think that's good enough. I'm not sure. I'm going to keep riding it more. Because before it was when it was like at idle it was dropping the pressure but right now it seems okay it's actually kind of staying as you can see the motor was a little bit warm and whenever i rev it up it goes way higher so 
that's way more than before because before it wasn't doing all that if you remember and whenever i step on the gas the truck i can feel that it doesn't shake because before it was shaking a lot and i'll show you right up here so she sounds way better the you can kind of hear the air intake right there but yeah let me know what you guys think down below in the comments and you can also see that the check engine light is gone and the egr code is not there either which is good so that bypass worked out pretty nicely and it was cheap to do but like i said i'll, I'll show you guys that on a separate video right there if you want to you know check that out in case you want to do that or have an issue with bypassing it and you don't want to pay you know for a tune or something like that so that's a pretty easy way to do it and i'll show you guys that on next time so yeah there she goes she sounds pretty good now she's pretty quiet and you know i just got to put the hood back on and i can ride it around but that's what she's looking like right now and i do want to get rid of this push fan right here but for now you know that'll do and if you guys like this content don't forget to hit that like button down below subscribe comment all that good stuff that way we can keep making more videos like this and i'll see you guys in the next one Work out. I'm just here to have a look around Get to work, I'm here to lift some pounds I'm on another wave of different sound I'm like quarter to three I'm still working 500 degrees Passion burning I think you forgot You must have forgotten I do this a lot I just made it up